Welcome to another episode of Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark. Today I'm going to show you how I built my own spectrum analyzer using Lego bricks. That's right, Lego. I will include all plans for you to build your own version of your uh, Lego analyzer. And of course we will include the electronics all schematics and uh, of course the software source code. So you can do your own modifications and you can build your own version. Let's get started. Is this going too fast for you? Don't worry, I'll include all the building plans. So it's easy for you to reconstruct it later. No need to pause the video at every frame. Now we're almost done. We just need to add the back frame. The back panel that we assembled earlier just fits right on here. And then all we need to do is close it up, only to open it up later again to put in the electronics. Well, of course, the schematic is included, but just let's, let us take a closer look. The most important things are, is the analog front end, uh, which are basically bandpass filters uh, for each and every uh, frequency band. Uh, so I have 10 of those. We have a preamplifier for a microphone and a, an audio in, a line input with a digital switch so we can select which one we're going to use. Uh, we have of course a microcontroller. Then I added a multiplexer because I want to be able to uh, select different uh, inputs because each and every band filter has an output that I want to read. and. I didn't want to use all the analog inputs, so ports, because I just use the multiplexer and have it to one input. Then the ESP is basically the digital part, of course. Um, what it does is I sample my analog input and convert that to a, a readout on the LED bars. And of course, we have the user interface, not that spectacular, it's three potentiometers and two switches. We also have a power supply. You can feed it with uh, 12 volts. We have a fuse, we have two protection diodes, and of course we have a regulator that turns the 12 volt into five volts. So for soldering these small components, you need a very fine tip. Let me show you exactly what I'm using. It's a very tiny. So let's start with the integrated circuit. Just one of many. And before I put it on, without using a stencil to apply soldering paste, you need to solder one by one. And what I like to do is first I apply some tin to one corner, then I put the component in place where I want it. And then I solder the rest of the connections. And of course this will work, but if you have a lot of components it would be better to uh, order a stencil next time but I forgot to do that so oops and yeah you do need to clean it up with some sort of some flux cleaner I think James did a very nice video on uh, flux cleaning and he tested several products and you can take a look at that video if you want and it might look like I'm putting on components randomly but actually I'm using a very nice silicon mat under my microscope and it has all these little compartments so I put each and every component in the compartment and they're numbered so that helps me a lot and then I already soldiered like 10 of these boards, so I'm quite familiar with the setup. Let's see, 13. Although if you have a, a hot air uh, gun and you have soldering paste or a dispenser, you could dispense soldering paste on each and every island and then uh, use uh, hot air. That's how I prefer to do it, but I don't have the tools here. But if I assemble uh, bigger boards or uh, boards with more components, I buy them pre-assembled or I use a hot air gun to solder all the components on equally. However, this is going to take up a lot of time, time we don't have right now. So let's just uh, skip ahead. So ahead of time, I have the board completely assembled. As you can see, it has uh, many components and this one has been done with a hot air gun. How you assemble it, of course, is totally up to you. We still need to add some two hole components to the board and we need to separate the control interface from the main board. So there are some breakout tabs you can just carefully saw it off and then we need to put all the components in place. We have some potentiometers and we have to put in the switches and solder all in place. But sometimes things are just too big for the microscope so let's put that aside. 
bigger things you don't need the microscope so I put it aside quickly and I'm going to solder on these potentiometers and for that I'm going to switch to a bigger tip and there we have it our very own interface board so let's take a closer look at the completely assembled board we have the ESP32 we have a fuse some connectors and some potentiometers to make some adjustment if needed one is for the microphone input one is for the line in, uh, input and the other two has to do with the um, acquired data before it goes to the microcontroller you can look at the schematic for more details well, basically all we need to do is connect these two and connect the LED strips and create some light input or microphone input and we're, we're good to go. So let's put this in the housing. Now it's time for us to put in the electronics. For that I'm going to remove the whole light tower. Like so. Because the way I constructed it is easy to insert the electronics. We can just remove these two plates and if necessary this one. And we will be able to put in the electronics. In regard to the, the towel. It's easy to simply remove the back wall because that's also the way I constructed it. That way it's going to be easy to put in the light strips. Let's start the electronics. Okay, so I took some light strips and I cut them up into uh, the length I need. We're going to apply them to the back panel. I just made a little tool to align the LEDs nicely. Make sure you got the direction right. Okay, after you completed the PCB by adding the through hole components, you insert the ESP32 controller board, and then you need to connect the panel, the user interface, before we can mount everything in the housing. And that's just going to be a one on one soldiering. That means pin one of the controller board goes to the pin one of the main board. So we'll start with the blue wire. Once you connected the user interface to the main board, we can put everything in a housing. Well, the main board just goes into the housing and we use a little Lego plates to keep it in place. And it's just something that prevents it from falling out. And of course, the user interface goes to the front. So we can just operate it here. So we hooked up the front panel, the user interface uh, and the microphone and we're going to use a USB a power cable. Although uh, the PCB has an onboard power supply and you can, use, you can feed it using a power adapter. Um, but for now I'm just going to stick with the, the USB cable. I will already plug it in here like so. And at the back you can just uh, feed through any power cables or audio cables or whatever you want because it not only does it have a microphone input it also has a line input that you can use and then it's time to put everything together so now the light towel is in place it's time to put the back plate in place which is not going to be hard at all because everything is pre-wired like so and all we need to do now is put the little plates on top. Now all that's left to do is to connect the, the LEDs and the LED strips to the main board. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! It's time to look at the Arduino sketch, the, the source code of the analyzer. It's not that complicated, although it has some advanced functions, but I put comments in the software um, where it's important. You can just read the, the, the sketch and see where it takes you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them at the community. We'll put the link uh, below. You can decide to uh, compile and upload the sketch using the Arduino EDA, or you can use uh, web browser programming. And we also put a link for that below. So the Arduino sketch is divided into several files. Uh, let me just point out that in the main file I put uh, all the versions of the libraries I used. So in case you run into compatibility problems, 
first thing you should do is use the same version as I did. Another file, uh, settings, because in here basically is anything you need to change. Uh, you can change the matrix height, the matrix width, in case you're using uh, different LEDs. Uh, you can change it here, more LEDs, fewer LEDs. Um, some other settings in here you can change. It's all well commented. So um, please look at the code in the comments if you have any questions. And of course, also defined here are all the colors. So if you want to change the way things look, if you want to change red to yellow or blue to red or whatever, this is the file uh, to look for and do the changes. There is another thing in here. Um, this analyzer comes with a, a Easter egg, a hidden feature, because basically it also has a web server, which is the web stuff. You don't need to change it. I'm just pointing it out. When you uh, fire up the device and then you use your cell phone or uh, whatever device on your Wi-Fi, uh, you can connect to the USB 32 and configure your Wi-Fi settings. After that, you can just have uh, live access to the analyzer data. So you can use your web browser to have another audio analyzer on your desktop. If you want to know what that looks like, uh, you should take a look at uh, one of the previous videos I did. We put a link below. First thing you need to do is uh, compile. And of course, you need to select the right microcontroller. Uh, we're using the ESP32 do it dev kit one so you can change that here and select the right version for you and then of course you press compile and upload or you skip the whole compiling uh, if you build an exact copy of what I did then you can just use the uh, web browser programming in which I just made my sketch compile uh, available for upload we'll put the link below and that's all there is to it. We finished the build, now it's time for a demo. Let's enjoy! This is all I got for you today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, if you're going to build your own housing using Lego bricks, possibilities are nearly endless. I love to see what you've built and what you come up with. Please show us at the community. We'll put the link below. And if you have any questions or you want to share some information about things you built, you can leave a comment at the community and I'll do my best to answer each and every one of you. For now, I wish you all the best. Until next time.